water storage tanks. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the need of water storage in buildings. Describe the types of water storages required in a building. Illustrate the different types of storage tanks used in domestic buildings. Introduction to Water Storage Tanks In most of our houses, we have a steady supply of water to meet the household needs of drinking, washing, bathing and cleaning. And all these activities happen through the appropriate water distribution system we have in our houses. An integral part of such water distribution system is storage tanks. Usually, storage of water in tanks within the premises of a building is very important. Do you know why? Because it ensures to provide uninterrupted water supply in the building in case the main municipal water supply is shut off for repairs or if there is a power failure. It may also help to supplement the direct municipal supply in case of excess or peak demand. In this lesson, let us discuss the types of water storages required and different types of storage tanks used in domestic buildings. Water storage tanks In general, two types of water storages are required in the buildings. They are overhead storage and underground storage. We will discuss one by one. Overhead storage The tanks which are placed on the top of building or elevated to a certain height with the help of columns are called overhead storage tanks. When the city water supply is available at sufficient pressure round the clock, then no overhead storage is required. However, in most of the cities, water supply is limited to a few hours in the morning and evening. Due to this reason, it becomes imperative to store water in overhead tanks, particularly for its use in toilets and urinals. This requirement depends upon the number of sanitary fixtures in the building and may vary from city to city, depending upon the living standards of the occupants of the building. The required overhead storage capacity for flushing purpose per fixture for different types of buildings stipulated by the Bureau of Indian Standards wide its code IS1172 is given in the table. In areas of chronic water shortage or intermittent supply, additional overhead storage is required for other domestic uses like washing and bathing as indicated in the table. Next is underground storage. The storage tanks constructed below the ground surface or below the least floor level of building are referred to as underground storage tanks. These tanks are required to collect water from municipal supply lines if the water pressure in the main tank is insufficient to reach the overhead tank. The water collected in the underground tank is then pumped up to the overhead tank. Direct use of pumps on the municipal mains is always prohibited by the municipal authorities as it reduces the water pressure in the adjoining houses or buildings. The capacity of an underground storage tank should be the net difference between the daily peak demand and the flow during hours of supply. For normal buildings with a dependable water supply, underground storage capacity is taken at 12 to 24 hours of average daily demand. We will now discuss the different types of domestic overhead and underground storage tanks used in domestic buildings. Domestic underground storage tanks Typical details of a rectangular underground water storage tanks are shown. Such a tank is made of RCC or brick masonry. The tank is to be filled from the municipal supply inlet and is covered from the top to avoid any contamination. The top cover may be provided with a manhole for inspection and cleaning purposes. Suitable pump is installed to lift water 
from the tank to the overhead tank. Care should be taken to construct an underground tank so that it is watertight and does not leak when it is full. It should not be located near sewers, septic tanks, soak pits, oil tanks, or underground car parking areas to avoid seepage of water surfaces. Next is domestic overhead storage tanks. Overhead tanks placed on the top of the buildings should be properly located so as to safely transmit their loads to the beams and columns in the building. Three types of tanks are usually used, RCC or masonry tanks, GI or metal tanks and HDPE tanks. Let us discuss these one by one. RCC or masonry tanks. Tanks made from RCC or brick masonry have traditionally been used since they can be easily constructed in any shape and size to suit the side dimensions. Brick masonry tanks are generally used for smaller sizes, while RCC tanks are generally adopted in higher sizes. Such a tank has to be made watertight by adding a waterproofing compound in the concrete and the plaster mix. All the inlets and outlets must be inserted at the time of construction. Next is GI or metal tanks. Metal tanks fabricated from mild steel or galvanized iron sheets have traditionally been used in houses over the years as they can be easily fabricated and are light, durable and easy to install. Galvanized tanks are made from GI sheets, usually 16 or 18 gauge, and are fabricated using galvanized angle iron for corner supports and the sheets riveted with GI rivets. The non-corrosive nature of galvanized tanks makes them ideal for domestic and drinking water. Use of non-galvanized materials in the fabrication of GI tanks may corrode the tanks faster. GI tanks can be made only in smaller sizes, up to 1,800 liters or 1.8 meter cube capacity due to the limitation of sheet sizes. Besides metal tanks using mild steel sheets can however be fabricated to any shape and size with suitable structural supports. The inside and outside surfaces of such tanks are protected against corrosion using suitable paints and coatings. For the tanks holding water that is used for drinking and domestic purposes, non-toxic paints must be used. Finally, HDPE tanks or simply plastic tanks. HDPE tanks are usually made of high-density polyethylene HDPE or fiberglass reinforced plastic or any such strong plastic material. They are usually available in a variety of shapes and sizes and are light and corrosion resistant. Though they are not immune to ultraviolet radiation from sunlight, they can be protected using appropriate resin coverings. Syntex brand HDPE tanks have nowadays become very popular in the country. Finally, the general requirements of domestic water storage tanks are that Water tanks should be watertight. Water tanks should be provided with a vent pipe for ventilation. Water tanks should have an overflow pipe. Water tanks should have a score pipe with a plug at the bottom. An overflow or score pipe should be directly connected to any drain, gully trap or sewer. Vents and overflows must be protected by a suitable gauge or grating to prevent the entry of mosquitoes and insects. Conclusion Usually, storage of water in tanks within the premises of a building is very important because it ensures to provide uninterrupted water supply in the building in case the main municipal or groundwater supply is shut off for repairs or if there is a power failure. It may also help to supplement the direct municipal supply in case of excess or peak demand. Summary In this lesson, 
We have learned that in most of the cities, water supply is limited to a few hours in the morning and evening. Due to this reason, it becomes imperative to store water in overhead storage tanks, particularly for its use in toilets and urinals. Underground storage tanks are required to collect water from municipal supply lines if the water pressure in the main is insufficient to reach the overhead tank. RCC or brick masonry tank is filled from the municipal supply inlet and is covered from the top to avoid any contamination. Galvanized tanks are made from GI sheets, usually 16 or 18 gauge, and are fabricated using galvanized angle iron for corner supports and the sheets are riveted with GI rivets. Whereas metal tanks using mild steel sheets can however be fabricated to any shape and size with suitable structural supports. Finally, plastic tanks are usually made of high-density polyethylene HDPE or fiberglass reinforced plastic or any such strong plastic material.